Okay, here's our last one. And <clears throat> this is, uh, we looked at two examples that were kind of like four words, A plus B, find C. And then we looked at um, two that were like, here, C, find A and B. So now this last one is kind of like a mixture, okay? Because we're going to be trying to find a resultant force. Um, but in this case, we know the direction of the resultant force. We just don't know the magnitude of it, okay? So let's suppose we got our situation here that um, we need to generate a certain force and it has to be at that angle right there. Maybe we don't care what the magnitude is, but it has to be at that angle, okay? And we have these constraints where we've got maybe two ropes, two other ropes we're gonna work with. And one of those ropes is gonna go straight up. And we know that that rope is going to have to have a magnitude of six kilonewtons. Okay, that's one of our constraints. The other constraint we know is that the rope has to follow, our second rope has to follow this line right there. And we don't know what the tension in that rope is going to be. We only know it's going to be in that direction. Okay, so we've got the tension and the direction of one rope. We've got the direction of the other. And we know that together those two ropes have to create a pull at 45 degrees. We just don't know what that net pull will be. Okay, so we work this, uh, we set it up very similar to, to the others. Let's put some labels on here. Uh, the one that's going straight up, we're going to call that F sub U. And the one that's going down at an angle, we're going to call that F sub V. So those are our two vectors. And so F sub U plus F sub V is equal to the vector F. Okay, so let's move it over here and work with our parallel idea just a little bit. So here's F U and here is F V like so. Okay, so I'm going to do my parallelogram like this, and they're going to result in a force here. So there's my vector F, just like that. Now let me also build a triangle. It's my favorite, favorite way to work from with these. And so we're going to go up F sub U, and we're going to come down F sub V, and they're going to result in our force F just like this. Okay, now let's put some labels inside of our triangle. So the one at the bottom, we're going to call that alpha down here. There's alpha. I'm going to call this guy gamma, and we'll call this guy beta. All right, so we got our alpha, our beta, and our, our gamma in there, just like that. Now we got to figure out what those angles are, which should be possible because we know the geometric layout of the whole structure. Okay, we know what angles are, are going where. All right, so let's start with alpha, uh, see if we can figure out what alpha should be. Now, if we look at our picture, our picture tells us that from F down to FV is 105 degrees. So that means this guy right here is 105 degrees. And we know that this guy up here is 45 degrees. And so this angle if we extend Fu downwards, this guy right in here, which happens to be um, gamma, I said we were starting with alpha. We already know alpha is 45, sorry. So we're starting here, um, ha happens to be gamma. So if you have a hard time seeing that, take a look up here. There it is, just 
just like that. And so we can know then right away that 45 plus 105 plus gamma has to be 180. And so gamma then is going to turn out to be uh, 30 degrees. Okay. Just like that. Um, I, I kind of already gave away that. Um, so there's that. Uh, alpha is 30 degrees. Woo. Alpha is 45 degrees. And so then beta has to be uh, 180 minus gamma, which is 30, minus alpha, which is 45. And so then beta turns out to be uh, 105 degrees. Okay. All right. Sidebar. Your book is not very creative with numbers. In reality, there's all kinds of numbers. They run the gamut from super teeny to super huge, and they have all kinds of variety. We've seen an angle of 105 degrees like four times, maybe. Okay. We've seen it a lot in this set of videos. Okay. And um, your book does that. And uh, anyway, we're going to see that from time to time. Your book sort of like they get stuck on a number and then they just, they can't let it go. Okay. It's, it's kind of sad. Anyway, we have all of our angles. All right. So now we are ready. If you're thinking it's time for the law of signs, you, my friend, are thinking correctly. So we're going to have sine of alpha over A has to be equal to the sine of beta over B, which has to be equal to the sine of gamma over C. Now, we don't have an A, a B, or a C, but I, it's good to start with the basic equation and then transform that equation into your specific situation. That's going to reduce the number of mistakes you make uh, as opposed to just trying to write it all, uh, write down what I'm about to do right now. So let's go ahead and translate it. So we've got the sine of alpha. Now we don't have an A, but alpha is opposite of FV. And that's equal to the sine of beta over B. We don't have a B. However, opposite of beta is F of U, F sub U. And then we've got sine gamma. And again, we don't have a C, but opposite of gamma is F. Okay. So out of those combinations, the things we know all of our angles and we know F sub u. So we need to compare everything to this middle portion right there. Okay. All right. So let's start with f of v. f sub v is going to be f sub u. And then we've got sine of um, alpha. over the sine of beta. Okay. And whenever you work that out, you're going to get 4.392. Then we can do our other one, F, which is going to go FU, sine of gamma over the sine of beta. Double check my notes, gamma over beta, yep. And our answer on that one is 3.106. Okay. There you go. Just like that. Okay. So I know that you're probably not real familiar, at least up to now, with the laws of sines and the law of cosines. And, and if you were introduced to them um, earlier in your math career, um, they may have just been sort of incidental curiosities like, Oh, hey, yeah, here's these things. Um, 
But uh, now I, I hope you can know that they are your friends. All right. They can be very useful uh, with the right context. It does take a little bit of practice to know which one do I use here? Which one do I use there? Okay. But, um, but you'll get the hang of it real quick. All right. There we go.